poetry freaks. Can I do this? It's not quite three in the morning. I was sort of startled awake and uh, so I'm gonna see if I can do this without waking anybody up. I am wearing my poetry hat. It's like the ultimate poetry hat. It's one I knitted from a man at Christmas. It says, the devil told me to knit you a hat, which was a line from a poem I had written unpublished. Um, so we're just gonna do the Mad Song episode of Poetry Freaks, episode two. And I wanna remind that this is on YouTube as well as on the podcast apps that I have it on now. There's a way you have to activate the others. I don't know, we'll get there, technology. Lots of steps. Got the Dream Whip box, which I did sort of go through and comb out just the things that were like two word ideas for art projects and stuff and just took the phrases. So I think we will string together a string of pearls by the end of this magical summer of the poet. So I'm gonna draw the next one. And my hands went to summon the sea monster to the surface. That is line two of our string of pearls poem. I'm gonna keep track of them without really looking so that it'll be a big surprise at the end because that to me is always a joy to see how line by line day by day it strings together into something kind of magical so all right here we are the uh next thing we do after pulling a string of pearls line is to read the poem from the latest prompt last episode um when we rolled dice for um a decadent mood and a decadent word in honor of decadent poetry from the poetry collection from Penguin Classics that has like Oscar Wilde and Arthur Simons and three poems titled Spleen. So huzzah. Okay, so I'm gonna read the one the prompt was Mood, the Dark Angel, and the word glistening. So the Dark Angel by way of glistening goes like this. I just wrote it on the porch smoking the last cigarette in the house at 2.45 a.m. So here she goes, bear that in mind. In alchemy smoke and the cloak of moonlight, they welded together, dark angel and bright. And in their entwining, their shadows exchanged. Now he bore the pure light and she the deranged. She heard no one skulking while walking at night. He thirsted for purity, cherishment, light, and she for devotion, this rich and unclad. But in salvage of her song, its singer went mad. She writhed into darkness and folded her prize in kissing the lids of his glistening eyes. And that is the poem from the last prompt. So what do we need to do? We need to create a prompt for the next episode and ride along if you will. I, I'm gonna leave my laptop open, the light's better, isn't it? Oh, but I have to. Hi, are you listening on a podcast? You know how when you close your laptop and then you open it back up and it's usually on? Not this time, no sir, no sir. Okay, so I have to put in my pin number, do do do. Isn't that fun if you're just listening and not watching? Okay, but now I have light. So go to YouTube and see like what a difference that made if you're not on YouTube at the moment. I've got the whiskey glass with the 20 sided and the 30 sided dice inside. I put a post it at the bottom to try and muffle the sound because I'm all like, oh my gosh, it's so light. Oh, but of course I did not open. I didn't have, I couldn't have two. Uh, documents open at once. So I need to go to my Poetry Freaks expansion pack where we've got our decadent poetry mood. So I'm gonna roll the D20 for that little gem. And it's on 15. So the mood for the next time is 15. Embalmed in honey. Poetic mood embalmed in honey. If you're writing along, send it into hitmissandoutrage at gmail.com. I'll read it on the show. And for the decadent word, nine. Number nine. It's got a little dot by the bottom so I know it's not a six. Nerd talk. Dice talk. Candle. So candle embalmed in honey. So that is going to be your prompt. The mood, again, is embalmed in honey. The word you want to use is candle. So we're all set to write another poem. All right, now I will read one. Oh, oh, guess what? See, we're not live, so I can stop this right now and go get my transfusion poetica. Stand by. Okay, I'm back. Dash down to the basement for this book I wrote a couple of four, two, 
published it two years ago. Oh, it's called Transfusion Poetica, um, Poems Plus Art Gallery. And I was running down there going, when was I going to read from it? Oh, I wasn't. I was going to showcase my Dream Whip studies when I took photos involving Dream Whip during COVID. The box, the different states of 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 whipping it up and the cherry pie I put it on and the Tony in the bathtub mug, which if you're familiar with Breakfast Poetry Live, check out Instagram um, April of this year or any year. You'll probably see the Tony mug because coffee mugs were a big deal um, for some reason. Anyway, Dream Whip Studies, but the poem I will read is Forest Haunts. And this is going to be a treat because it's kind of dark in here. So I'm going to put my glasses. All right, Forest Haunts. A pair of bosomy spinsters, soft and pillowy glad, thrust cakes and whole jack-o'-lanterns through kitchen window into rejoicing hands of cheering neighborhood Halloween children. But deep connection, deep trust, feel lost here, now. That was another time, and a movie. The cemetery next door was full of wild elderberries, and yet those plush aunties were poisoners. I abandon my coffee, retreat to forest, a spectral cabin awaits me, Crowned in fists of black branches, deep in herbs, flowers, mythic aromas, cold winds, coated howling, fire glows, smokes, adorns, and warms. I only hide in deep trance of story with my forebears and my tea. Cords of phantoms hold me, teach me, strip me of the false. Oh, thank you, Transfusion Poetica, which you can get on Amazon.com. Um, maybe I'll put a link in the show notes if I remember. Thank you for listening to that. I like to call Transfusion Poetica uh, like kind of like the ultimate poetry textbook, if you don't mind, little cigarettes and whiskey. So, teachers, there you go. All right, and finally, there's just one more thing to do, and that is something intoxicating. And this time I have found a book at Half Price Books called The Book of Forms by Louis Turco. It's a handbook of poetics, third edition. And um, when I was flipping through it at the store going, why am I flipping through this? I know I'm going to buy it, but I was definitely, it definitely sealed the deal when it's kind of like a dictionary where it's got the guide words at the top of the page so you can kind of see uh, what term you're on. Mad Song. Mad Song and Skeltonics. We'll have to get to Skeltonics because that was also very intriguing. Mad Song, if I may. I want to talk about Mad Song. It's okay. I'm going to read this. Okay. Because I, this is three in the morning, so I did not study as hard as I should beforehand. The Mad Song is any lyric sung by a madman or a fool, but there is a particular Mad Song stanza in which many such lyrics traditionally appear. Um, and so, like, it traditionally goes back a long, long time, descendant of the um, main stanza of the Cuckoo song, which the main stanza, Cuckoo, Cuckoo, we'll sing ye Cuckoo, nor cease ye never now. Well, sing ye Cuckoo. So, you know, you can imagine sort of medieval folks singing Cuckoo and getting a kick out of that, talking about how the spring is coming. And I have to say, I have to warn right now, I'm going to put in the show notes just the exact time that the naughty words are going to come up because I, this is a clean podcast and yet not my fault there's an Ezra Pound poem I am compelled to read from the mad song entry of the book of forms um first of all though you know we want to remember that in the mad song it's springing from things that are celebrating the coming of spring and the, the cuckooing of birds well Ezra Pound gives us ancient music and it goes like this winter is a coming in lewd sing goddamn raineth drop and staineth slop and how the wind doth ram sing goddamn skiddeth bus and sloppeth us an egg hath my ham freezeth, freezeth river turneth liver damn you sing goddamn 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 tis why i am goddamn so gainst the winter's balm so goddamn damn sing goddamn sing goddamn sing goddamn damn ezra pound tisk and now you've tainted my podcast my clean family friendly podcast well the limerick is also a descendant of Mad Song. And I, we kind of know, I already lost the page. Um, but <laughs> there were some pretty good limericks in here. And um, some of them are new and I don't know about if we are allowed to read them. But, you know, there's always somebody from somewhere. There once was a man from Nantucket. Is how you always hear it start. Now you can hear the rest in your mind, I'm thinking. If not, I 
don't actually know the words to it, but we know it's got a terrible rhyme at the end. We don't really want to get that naughty. Ezra Pound really was pushing the envelope. That is all for this episode of Poetry Freaks. This is more like the Breakfast Poetry Live went um, back in the day, back in April's, uh, is to have, you know, four or five things that we do and not necessarily go plunging in as deep as I did into three poems called Spleen. How could you not? That was a blast. And I did try to write the prompted poem kind of in that swinging rhyming style that the decadents liked. I don't know if was, you'd call it swinging, but um, but they loved a rhyme. And I find rhyme really, mm, you know, I find it really uh, grabs. It's three in the morning, so now my words are gone. 3, 12 a.m. Um, but uh, I find that a rhyme really kind of grabs my soul sometimes. And um, and then I wrote one at like, you know, 2.45 in the morning. So you'll just take that as it comes. And thank you for joining me, Poetry Freaks. And we'll catch you later. Grab your poetry hat. Let's go grab your poetry hat.